It might sound hard to believe, but there is one essential process that you can use to recover from codependency. And you can do this process right now, as often or as little as you like. It's free and it's easy. And it is the way to quickly and effectively and permanently reclaim who you are, escape narcissistic abuse cycles, thrive in your life, and step into your unique soul's purpose. I call it spirit tapping because it bypasses your superego and allows you to connect with who you are with your essence, with your spirit. Spirit tapping allows you to tap your spirit on the head and say, hello, let's do it together. Pause this video and go and get a piece of paper and a pen. Do it now. Great, so you've got a piece of paper and a pen. At the top of the piece of paper, write the question, who am I? In big, beautiful, bold capital letters. Draw a line under that question and then draw a vertical line down the center of the page Title the left column, good qualities, and title the right column, bad qualities. Now ask yourself, who am I? Pause this video and write down, probably under good qualities, who you are. If you have absolutely no idea how to get started, I'll help you. Pick some good qualities that you think you have, that you think define you. You may not be these things all the time, but if you had to try to define yourself through a list of good qualities, what would go on the list? Who do you think you are? For me, I would write down, well, I think I'm intelligent. I think I'm handsome. I think I'm skilled. I think I'm musical. I think I'm creative. I think I'm good with money. I think I'm strong physically and emotionally. I think I'm insightful. I think I'm empathetic. I think I'm kind. I think I'm supportive. I think I'm loving. I think I'm caring. Write down as many good qualities as you can think of that define you. Now, at some stage in this process, you may notice yourself having difficulty owning your reality. In other words, having difficulty owning that you actually do have these good qualities. You may notice yourself hesitating to write down one or more good qualities that you think or that you know that you have. Now, my question for you is why are you hesitating? Why are you doubting yourself? Let's say, for example, that you think you're intelligent, but you're hesitating about writing it down because you don't want to seem up yourself or you don't want to seem arrogant. So in that situation, what you would do is you would take those judgments, up yourself and arrogant, you would capture them and write them down on the bad qualities column. Those are superego injunctions. So go through your good qualities list and write down as many good qualities as you can think of about who you are. Doesn't mean you need to be these things 100% of the time because nobody's perfect. But if you had to try to define yourself in a list of good qualities, Write down as many as you can, and as you're writing them down, notice the negative self-appraisals that come into your head about who you are or who you might be by writing down those good qualities. Maybe you're worried that you might be weird. Maybe you're worried that you might be self-absorbed. Maybe you're worried that you might be entitled. The words are important. Capture the words. These are superego injunctions. In order to recover from codependency, in order to recover from a fixated or polarized fawn response, you're going to need to become conscious of your superego injunctions. These words that are coming into your mind about who you are or who you might be. The bad qualities. So write down all of those bad qualities on the bad qualities column. Spend 5 or 10 minutes doing this process. Pause this video and then come back once you're done. Okay, so now you've got a list of good qualities. These are qualities that you think you are or that you know you are but you probably don't feel safe or secure owning about who you are because if you did own these qualities about who you are, it might mean that you are all of the bad qualities that you've got written in the other column. So now what we're going to do is you're going to ask yourself, are you actually those bad qualities? Go through every single one of them and ask yourself, go back through your memory of yourself, your whole life up until all this point, who you are now and ask yourself, am I fill in the blank. Am I arrogant? Am I weird? Am I self-absorbed? Am I really arrogant? Am I actually self-absorbed? Really ask yourself. Now, I would bet money on it that if you're listening to this video and you're here on this channel trying to recover from codependency, it is overwhelmingly unlikely that you actually are these negative or bad qualities. Now, this is important. It's not me telling you that you are not those bad qualities. You have to ask yourself, Am I arrogant? Am I self-absorbed? Do I really think so? What you need to do is to conclude to yourself through your evidence of your own life that you are not those bad qualities. Because what this does is it flips the mirror. It turns the internalized narcissistic abusers in your psyche 
back upon themselves. If you have narcissistic abusers in your past that invalidated you, now you can do the work to invalidate them. You flip the mirror because it's actually their judgments that were invalid about you. This is how you can step into healthy narcissism. The purpose of this process is for you to be able to take an accurate inventory of who you are. You can name your good qualities and see that you actually are all of these good things that you think you are most of the time, enough so that it actually defines you. And just because you are those things doesn't mean that you are all of those bad things because you can accurately assess for yourself whether you are actually those bad things. And my guess is that you probably aren't those bad things. You flip the mirror. It means that you are those good things and not those bad things. So now that you've done this, imagine yourself standing up in front of the world or in front of someone important to you standing in front of you that you are all of those good qualities. Imagine yourself saying it to them proudly. I am intelligent. I am handsome. I am creative musically. I am good with money. I am strong. I am emotionally strong. I am empathetic. I am kind. I am caring. And if you still have doubt or fear about doing that, it means that there are more superego injunctions that you have yet to dismantle. What are the words that you are telling yourself about who you are when you imagine yourself doing this? Write them down and then repeat the process. Ask yourself rigorously, do I think I am those things? 99% of the time the answer will be no. And if the answer is yes, then my guess would be that that particular quality is neither wholly good nor bad. That there is an aspect of that quality which could be seen as a good thing. For example, being weird. Being weird might be seen as a bad thing, but being weird might also be seen as quite a cool quality to have. It makes you unique. So you put weird on the good qualities list. So when you do this, this process that I call spirit tapping, you will start to feel really good about yourself. And yes, that is partly a result of realizing that you have all of these good qualities, but you already knew that you had all these good qualities and you probably already knew that you weren't those bad qualities. But what you have done is that you've consciously assessed your superego injunctions for their validity and found them to be invalid. What that means is that your toxified and tyrannical superego the part of your mind that you inherited from your parents and from society that's been driving the ship is now no longer driving the ship. You are driving the ship now. You are beginning to validate your reality for yourself. You are realizing that you don't need mirrors in the form of narcissists or other people to tell you who you are. That you can actually tell yourself who you are, that you can validate your reality for yourself. And that is is where self-esteem comes from. That is the feeling of self-esteem, being able to validate your reality for yourself, because that means that you are actually in control of your own life now. You are self-determining. You can disidentify from your superego, the part of your mind that you needed to develop in childhood in order to survive a toxic or abusive childhood environment, and you can allow your ego, your healthy ego, to start driving the ship. This is the essential process behind flipping the mirror. This is the essential process behind permanent, lasting recovery from narcissistic abuse. It's easy and it's simple and it's an enjoyable process. Do it as much and as often as you can. If you're ever feeling down about yourself, notice your internal dialogue, capture the words that you're telling yourself about yourself and ask yourself, do I think that that is an accurate representation of who I am? And if it's not, Ask yourself, well, who am I? And write down the good qualities. And if you fear that owning those good qualities might mean that there are all of these bad qualities that all of a sudden pop into your mind, do it again. Ask yourself, am I really those bad qualities? And on and on and on. The more you do this, the more self-esteem you can develop. And difficulty experiencing appropriate levels of self-esteem is the living, breathing heart of codependence or codependency. This is the way out. And it's permanent and lasting because once you learn how to validate your own reality for yourself it will become a habit it'll just happen you won't need to focus or think about it anymore you'll just automatically validate your reality for yourself 
As always, if you liked this video or you got value from this video, please like this video and subscribe to Flip the Mirror. I'm constantly creating new content that's relevant to recovery for victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse. And if you're stuck or you're ready to fast track your recovery or take it to the next level, then book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. The link to that is in the description below. Sessions go for 40 to 80 minutes, depending on how much you've got to bring to a session. Sessions are currently $100 US per session. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Go and practice spirit tapping. It'll absolutely change your life. Take care now. All the best.